saga of the great Hudson's Bay Fur Company. And of the brave men who traveled the untrekked wilderness from Labrador to California, from Minnesota to Alaska. Starring Barry Nelson as Jonathan Banner, Hudson's Bay Man. With George Tobias as Pierre Falcone. Hearing news of an armed force near the border, I was sent by the Hudson's Bay Company to investigate. I decided to ask these soldiers a few questions. My companions were a Cree chief named Cavendish and a trapper, Jean Lebeuf, who took a dim view of my questioning an entire army. Ah, the mosquito! Keep paddling. We don't find no soldiers, but we find plenty of mosquitoes. Uh, Cavendish isn't complaining. If he speak more better English like me, he would complain too. But he knows... Hey. Footprints. Soldiers. We better find them before they find us. Strictly for officers, not us. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's one of them again. What happened? Ah, uh, Mr. Gap. In it! Hey, Lieutenant, uh. Seeing as there's just the three of us in a thousand mile of wilderness... You're at attention, Bowley. Yes, sir. After reconnoitering the area for the day, I've made up my report. It reads as follows. U.S. Expeditionary Force, the Upper Mississippi River, Lieutenant Zebulon M. Pike commanding. Progress this day, about 18 miles over partially wooded terrain. The river here is separated into many small, shallow streams. But I intend to rediscover the main channel, which I'm confident will continue to lead us far northward. Voices, we're there. Let's work closer. Thanks. This region appears utterly devoid of human habitation. Assuredly, we are the first white man ever to penetrate this wilderness. And in fact, we may... Ah! Keep... Ah, Angel! Seen us. <coughs> Shoot pretty good, too. You still planning just to ask questions? Hold your fire, Bowley. Probably never seen white men. Why did they sneak up on us? Now you two establish a base of fire. <clears throat> I'm going to encircle. What? You two cover me. I'm going to ask those questions. Ask them nice and pretty, please. Banner of Hudson's Bay. Well, who are you? Uh, <clears throat> Lieutenant Pike, Zebulon Pike, United States Army, your servant, sir. <laughs> nice to know you, Lieutenant. See here, Banner. Have you been in this territory long? Just a week or so. I, uh, no, no, I mean you, Hudson's Bay man. Oh, about, uh, 15 years. 
15 years. <laughs> Something the matter. matter. I was sent in command of an expeditionary army. And when you lead an expedition for five months through considerable hardship and through what you honestly believe is wild, unexplored territory, and then suddenly you find Sorry about that, Lieutenant. Of course, we just trade here. Yeah. Can't be helped, I suppose. S uh, say, where is your expeditionary army? You're uh, looking at it, friend. Oh. Private Anderson and Private Baldy. The rest of my commanders in the rear. About four days to the rear. All seven of them. Uh, well, <clears throat> this is John LaBeouf. This is Cavendish. Oh, uh, uh, how? The uh, great white father in Washington sends me to smoke the pipe of peace with his Indian children. Uh, what is this uh, expedition for? <clears throat> My instructions, sir, from Congress and uh, my superior officers are as follows. One, to follow up the Mississippi River to its source. Oh, well, that... Uh, well, and that... two, uh, to establish friendly relations with the Indian tribes. And three, to locate that point where a line drawn due west of Lake of the Woods intersects the Mississippi River, which, according to the Treaty of 1783, establishes the boundary between the United States and Canada. And there, sir, to plant the American flag. Hmm. Why do you say hmm, Mr. Banner? Well, you say a line drawn due west from Lake of the Woods. Yes, the where it intersects the Mississippi. Well, uh, Lake of the Woods, you know, that... That's 120 miles farther north. I'm aware of that, Banner. Does that make any difference? It wouldn't only... Only the Mississippi, you see. Yes? Well, the Mississippi starts right here. I, I can't help what it says in the treaty, Lieutenant. 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 I can't help what it says in the treaty. There's this lake basin here, half a hundred, hundred muddy little brooks flow into it. You can take your pick, but this is where the river starts. You know, I, I was afraid of something like this. Well, I guess it's just one of those days. Well, Banner. <clears throat> You lead me to the most northern branch of the Mississippi. You're standing on it. Uh, the main lake is just behind us, but uh, this spring here, that, that feeds the lake. And uh, I suppose if you wanted to, I'll choose the absolute northernmost part. Are you sure this just isn't a, a puddle banner? No, 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 no. It flows out this end, see? Careful, you'll cause a flood downstream. Men, these are the mighty headwaters of the Mississippi. Well, has to start somewhere, as I reckon. Don't take it hard, Lieutenant. No, after all, you, you still own a good bit of land. Everything south of here. Sir? I said uh, the United States owns everything south of here. Everything south of here, Mr. Banner, and a good deal north of here. What? Well, I guess you don't understand the situation. According to the Treaty of 1783, which I have already explained, the United States owns everything up to a line drawn due west from Lake of the Woods. Excuse me, Lieutenant. But you said a line drawn due west from Lake of the Woods to intercept the Mississippi. Now, Lake of the Woods is up here. The top end of the Mississippi is right here. So. For a line... A line drawn due west, Mr. Banner. A line drawn due west, Lieutenant, just flies off nowhere. For a line from Lake of the Woods to meet the Mississippi, it's got to. Banner, I know you don't mean to be dumb. That is, I'm just trying to get you to try and understand. According to that treaty, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, the treaty is quite clear, Mr. Banner. It says a line drawn due west from a line out of Lake of the Woods. This is where the boundary starts. I am this moment standing in Canada. 
Mr. Banner, as a military man, I have witnessed firsthand the horrors of war. <laughs> well, I've seen it bit myself. Now, I don't want to cause any bloodshed, but I must remind you, sir, you are dealing with members of the United States Army. As the detachment you see here, I have a strong force of men in reserve. Men skilled in every phase of modern combat. Sir. And if Sir. I, too, am a peace-loving man. But as a representative of the British Empire, I would call to your attention our valiant allies and to His Majesty's Indian brothers, whose loyalty and ferocity... Don't, don't come meddling in Canada, Pike. I claim this land on behalf of the President and Congress of the United States. Oh, I claim this land on behalf of His Britannic Majesty, King George III. Banner! We whipped you in 76. We can do it again. Now, now, look, Pike, look, look, I'm a peace-loving man. Now, here, look, Pike! cabin up above there where you can dry off. Good. It was a lovely war while that lasted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that the war is over, I feel like my normal self again, except hungry. Banner, I could I could eat a horse, ears, hide, and hooves. Well, we got plenty of food here. You're uh country been a little short on rations, have they? Yeah, well, have to live off the land. Hasn't been bad recently, though. Well, we lost a couple of men a month back. Hey, what's that? Uh, King George III. Yeah, we use King George to trade with. The Indians love him. South of here? Sure, yeah, south of here. Why? Well, it's American territory. I can trade on American territory. It's in the treaty. Yeah, but you can't go around giving out King George medals to uh, United States Indians. Is that... Are you going to start that again? Now, just a second, Banner. I've got my duty. I can't let my personal feelings interfere with things like this. If you do things for Indians, you got to do yeah. Well, what is that? Uh, cards, John. You never play cards before, John? Cards? Yeah. See, some of these cards, they have little black spots. Others have oh, little red spots. And some of these, they, uh, they have faces. Uh, hey, <laughs> look at the little face. Uh, two little faces. Hey, you. You turn them up the other way, faces both ways, huh? Look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you ever play a little game called uh, United States Poker? Poker? Yeah. Uh, you teach? Sure, I teach you. Uh, <laughs> what we end here? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a lot of trade goods here, Banner. Oh, yeah, sure. We got a little of everything here except tobacco. Had a canoe upset at the 
Grand Rapids and lost all the tobacco we had. Yeah, pay duty on them? Duty? Yeah. Import duty on your trade goods. You uh, said you trade south of here. Well, I tell you, I had the money right in my fist, ready to pay, but there was nobody there to collect it. It's no laughing matter, Benner. Who's laughing? Pervasus. Eights over trades. Fours. And how you say, King's High? Hey. <laughs> hey. hey, you sure <laughs> you never played this game before? <laughs> Move over, Anderson. I want the ones to join us. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, boy. Now, big enough for you, Zeb? Banner, I know it seems foolish to you that I worry about boundaries and import duties and things like that, but someday it will be important. Someday this land will be settled. There'll be cities here of a, of a thousand people. Here? Oh, Zeb, I hope they'll leave room for my supplies. Jack's over full. Beats me. Full house. <clears throat> A royal flush. And he filled it. Holy. Anderson. You're not supposed to gamble with the natives. For the first time, Lieutenant, I understand why. Hey, Lieutenant, will you look at that meat? Will you look at that meat? Elk steak. Throw it over. I'll eat it raw. Yeah, there's a wind coming up. It's gonna rain tonight. Banner! Now what? I didn't notice that before. The Union Jack. Well, you know. Please, Lieutenant. No more wars. Banner, I have to report to Congress. Now, those King George III medals, I guess I can forget about them. And the import duty, I'll tell them you promised to be more careful in the future. But, Banner, how can I tell them? that I found a British flag flying in the United States and I just let it fly there. Is it on your side of the line? Yep, I guess it is. Oh, even if I accept your version of the boundary line, which I haven't, but if I did and we draw the line to the top of that pond, that flagpole is in the United States. Well, draw the line down the middle of the pond. And that puts me on the safe side. Oh, I'm sorry, Banner. That's not acceptable. That's your final word, is it? Well, no, I've uh, taken my official stand on the subject and that's it. Couldn't negotiate a bit. No, we couldn't. That's my official opinion on it, and nothing on earth can make me change. All right. Look at that meat. Will you look at that meat? Look pretty good, do you? Oh, man, it showed up. Sure wish you boys could have some. Hey, what do you mean? Well, there seems to be this boundary dispute between us two countries, and... Uh, your commanding officer wants our flag down and all, and so, well, I, I figure what I'm now preparing is a meal just for loyal Britishers. John, I believe this is how you like yours. Is it rare? Yeah, that's right, with the juice running betwixt. Lieutenant, we could rush them. Oh, uh, sure. How would that look on your report? Uh, we'll do bully. We'll just have to stamp it. Lieutenant, give him that nasty pond. Anderson, you don't understand. Any line we establish now runs from here to Lake in the Woods. There are thousands of acres at stake. Oh, uh, speaking of stake, Cavendish, I uh, believe this is how you like yours. Uh, crisp on the outside and uh, soft within. Oh, Lieutenant, please. All right. Let me wait here. I'll, I'll have a talk with him. Uh, Banner, I may have been a bit hasty. Perhaps, uh... Perhaps I would consider drawing the line to the middle of that pond. Oh? Well, I've changed my mind. What? Well, considering the insult to His Majesty's flag, I'm now holding out for the bottom of the pond. Banner, this is an atrocity. Mr. Delegate, you're in my light. Don't give in to him, Lieutenant. I won't. We'll remember our duty. Tomorrow we'll, uh... Get our own food. Tomorrow. John, I don't think the three of us can eat all this. Don't give in to him, Lieutenant. Don't worry, Bowley. You can trust me. Banner? Here comes Yankee Doodle again. Banner? Banner, I surrender. Complete? 
We'll draw the line to the bottom of the pond. No tricks. My word as an officer. In that case, I'm pleased to entertain your delegation. Welcome to Canada. Sure did. Why don't you drive a ruthless bargain, though? Well, Zeb, I, I guess in international affairs you can't be soft-hearted. Well, no, sir. Yeah, I guess you're right. Anderson, get me my pack. What do you got there, Zeb? Tobacco. Tobacco? Uh, tobacco? Oh, hey, wait, wait. I get my pass. Hey, we haven't had a smoke in a month. Did I tell you? We are our canoe overturned and we, we... Yes. You told me that, Banner. Yeah. Here. Here. Forget how you like it, Bowley. Smoke or chew? Oh, smoke. Thank you kindly, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Well, I always say this. Nothing rounds off a good meal like a, a good pipe. Thank you kindly, Private Anderson. Be only too pleased to offer you a bit of tobacco. Which I may say is Virginia's best black twist. Fully dried, matured, and mm, rolled roll tight. Oui. However, dear Mr. Banner there has been so strict about the matter of that boundary line. Mr. Banner. And the great white father in Washington would be only too pleased to share the pipe of peace with his Indian children. If they were only his. John. Sit down. How is life, Private Bowley? Full up and down, Lieutenant Pike. Pike, for a pipe full of tobacco, I'm not going to move that line back to the top of the pond. You better know that. All right, Banner. I'll be merciful. Suppose we say the middle of the pond. The middle? If that's acceptable. No, by golly, not for a pipe full of... All right, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. I accept. The great white father in Washington leans across to King George and says, How? Oh. How? Oh. capacity as representative of the United States, I prepared this letter, a copy which will go with my report to Congress, warning you against the further distribution of King George medals to United States Indians. Drawing to your attention the establishment of import duties on trade goods, and uh, cautioning you, sir, against the building of British forts on what may turn out to be American soil. There. Lieutenant Pike, uh, <clears throat> as representative of the Hudson's Bay Company, Britain and Canada, I've prepared a reply to your letter in which I agree to read your letter very carefully. God, present arms. Ready? Aim. Banner, 
Take care of yourself, Zeb. Guard! Shoulder! Arms! Left! Turn! Quick! Bark! So we stood and watched them march off over the prairie. That small, ridiculous, brave, and wonderful army. And then we looked up to where our two flags flew in friendship, side by side. And, please God, they always shall.